If you're being given free drinks, it's because somebody wants you drunk. What's that even mean? Hi, I'm Renee Ritchie. Welcome back to Vector. I suspect a lot of you are going to hate this show, or hate me for making it, or both. I can already feel your stabby eyes and see the rage you're getting ready to smite into the comments. That's cool. That's fine. The important thing here is the discussion. So watch it, then bring it on. Here we go. A week or so ago, a paper was published outlining just how much and how frequently Google collects our personal data through devices running Android and Chrome. It was written by Douglas C. Schmidt, professor of computer science at Vanderbilt University, who my colleague Jerry Hildenbrand of Android Central said is very well versed in Android. The paper is framed as follows. While the public has been focused on the ongoing Facebook and Cambridge Analytica scandal, Google has largely avoided public scrutiny about its data collection practices, despite having the ability to collect far more personal data about consumers across a variety of touch points. Wait, hold on. I'm going to pause here for a moment and repeat something I've said, well, repeatedly. Google enjoys a reality distortion field beyond what even Steve Jobs was attributed with at the height of his product marketing prowess. Today, Apple is going to reinvent the phone. And here it is. <laughs> when Jobs took to stage or to comment, there was never any lack of pushback by tech press, by pundits, by people who just didn't like what he was selling, especially open source advocates who, mock kernels and WebKit frameworks aside, didn't like how controlling or proprietary Apple was with the vast majority of its products. Google, on the other hand, has always enjoyed an incredible benefit of the doubt. Even the staunchest, hippiest, most neck-bearded nerds on the net seem happy enough to ignore the massive proprietary product stack of everything from search to AdSense to Play services because the Android open source project could, theoretically, be built into a functional phone by Bruce Wayne or Tony Stark or, you know, a real person with similar skills and resources. Now, I'm not saying Google's reality distortion field should be pointed out more than Apple's or more than anyone else's. I'm just saying all reality distortion fields should be pointed out, always. But back to the paper. There have been efforts to document individual practices by Google, such as their efforts to circumvent controls on Safari. More recently, an investigation by the Associated Press revealed that Google has continued to track location data even after a consumer has turned off the settings. Sorry me again. I've turned off tracking and other data collection what feels like a dozen times on a dozen different settings pages and a dozen devices and whenever a new one is linked I go there and somehow still find all the tracking all still turned on. It's like Google honors privacy requests about as often as Apple puts products on sale. I wonder why that is. While these research efforts have been important to the public policy dialogue, no research exists which looks at the breadth and depth of data collected by Google. So that's what Schmidt set out to do. Now, as to what he found, here again is my colleague from Android Central, Jerry Hildenbrand. I've read the report and I think it's well written, impeccably sourced, and factually sound. In other words, what Dr. Schmidt, who is no relation to former Google exec Eric Schmidt, what he says is absolutely true in my opinion. And that truth? An Android phone running Chrome, even if it's just sitting on a table and no one is using it, will send Google location information on average 14 times an hour, 340 times a day. By comparison, an iPhone running Safari, also just sitting on a table and not being used, doesn't allow Google to collect any data unless you pick it up and start using Google Apps and services. That Android phone, just sitting there alone on the table, communicates with Google 10 times more than that iPhone sitting alone on the table does with Apple. So a major part of Google's data collection occurs when the user isn't directly engaging with any of its products. And that's significant given how many people have Android devices running Google software and services on them all the time. Google, contrary to a lot of prevailing wisdom, can associate the passive anonymous data it collects this way with your personal information, largely through advertising technologies that Google controls. Likewise, it can associate quote unquote anonymous advertising identifiers accumulated from third party websites through the device level data collected via Android. Jerry from Android Central again. I hate the amount of data that Google collects from me. Full stop. 
I think it's insane what they harvest as well as how they harvest it. But I love what they do with it. There seems to be three broad groups of reactions to the amount of data Google and sure Facebook collect about us. One, people who just don't understand or don't care. Free services. Take my data, suckers. Two, people who understand what they're paying in data, but feel like what they're getting in return is worth it. Free as in Google. Fair deal. Three, people who believe their data is far too valuable or privacy far too important to give away just to get some dopey internet services in exchange. Gross. See, data is the great equalizer. Everyone has different amounts of time and money, but we all have roughly the same amount of personal data. We're all data rich. So paying with data often seems as trivial to us as buying a $25,000 piece of clothing or plane ticket must feel to an oligarch or pop star. And that'll stay true unless and until a time comes when even a small sampling of data can be projected out across a lifetime and the big internet companies decide we have to do far more from them to keep getting our services fixed. We're all benefiting from the data mining gold rush. We're all, right now, information billionaires. But what does that make the big internet companies? What does that make Facebook? And yeah, throw Amazon in there too. And in this case, specifically, Google. Jerry again. Google collecting data helps improve the company's bottom line. Google is not a smartphone company or even a search company. It is an online advertising company, one that happens to employ talented people who build amazing products and services that most everyone loves. Google collecting user data means you can get travel information and see which bar is the best in town and know if you should take a surfboard or a rain jacket when you visit Cape Hatteras next weekend. This isn't a case where some folks down the street are keeping tabs on you. It's a giant company collecting anonymized user data and having computer algorithms sort through it. There is nobody at Google who has a job reading your browser history. Nobody wants to have a job reading your browser history. My main concern here is that we know from history what people want and what happens are two very different things. Both accidents and pure idiocy happen. Look no further than Google's ill-fated social platform, Buzz, which at launch stupefyingly disclosed contact and location data, including to abusers about their past victims. We've also seen everyone from government agencies to private companies improperly, even illegally, snoop and spy on everyone from exes to celebrities using the data that's been collected. Google's gotten a lot smarter since Buzz, sure, and has protections in place to prevent abuse, fine. But as long as they're collecting and keeping that data, we're only ever one accident idiocy, one well-placed bad actor, one stupid corporate policy away from a breach or violation. Just look at Google and using machine learning algorithms to train drones most recently. Does it have to be this way? Here, from a previous video, is how Apple is going to great lengths to provide both better real-time traffic for navigation while also better protecting our private location information. Data from iPhones is segmented with the start and end points thrown away and only random de-identified parts from the midpoints used to probe for new routes and traffic. It's often said that Google wants to build the Star Trek computer, a system so powerful and so all-knowing that you can ask it literally anything at any time and get a useful answer. Library computer. History files. Subject, former Governor Cotus of Tarsus IV, also known as Cotus the Executioner. After that, background on actor Anton Caridian. Working. Kodos the Executioner. Summary. Governor of Tarsus IV, 20 Earth years ago. And that the best or easiest or most efficient or whatever way they could figure out to fund it was advertising and to feed it was to make things that looked like gadgets, Android phones and Chromebooks, but were really giant data harvesting machines. I mean, my then single digit year old godson got a Google account and Chromebook for school. And when I saw him, all he could do was tell me how cool it was that Google offered to let him play a Pac-Man style game, but on a map of his own street so he could chomp, chomp, chomp all his neighbor's houses. And while he smiled and giggled, all I could think of was the candy-coated permission dialogue box they must have shown him to grant them perpetual access to his location data a child's location data, and that they now knew where he lived and could tie all of that back to him for the rest of his school and subsequent life. 
because every time Google or someone says anonymized and they're not literally destroying data prior to collection to ensure it is actually anonymized, you know it's not true. As the paper points out, there are simply too many signals for all of this data not to be pattern matched back to you, to me, and yeah, our kids. Maybe I'm being beyond ridiculous for thinking this way. Maybe nobody cares. Maybe privacy is dead. And as long as they're going to take your data, you should make sure you get the best possible services while they're doing it. You know, make sure you're good and drunk first. In Star Trek, no one seems to care that the computer can tell people where they are at any time, even give their vital signs, even if they're embarrassingly elevated on the holodeck. But that computer isn't run by a private company. It's fictitious, run by a planetary and multiplanetary federation. And the people in Starfleet are in Starfleet, not private citizens. And even in Star Trek, we're only ever one mirror universe blink away from that same computer system, the one that knows where and how we are from being used to burn us all down at the touch of a button. I'm not saying you should delete Google, though you certainly can if you want to, and I'll do a video with viable alternatives soon. But I am saying, especially if you're concerned about Facebook, you shouldn't fool yourself or anybody else into thinking Google is different in kind. It's simply enjoyed far better PR, at least so far. I'm also not saying Google is biased. It's only ever and always biased towards Google. It doesn't care about our petty human language or politics or religion or whether we prefer Coke to Pepsi or Marvel to DC. It wants all of us, all of our data. The more, the wider, the better. I'm just saying be aware. Understand what it is you're paying to use these services you think might be free and open. You know like a trap, and then make the best, most informed decision for you. And that could include going out and writing better, smarter, more privacy-focused algorithms and machine learning models all of your own. You know, doing to Google what they did to Yahoo and AltaVista. If you want to do that, I recommend you check out Brilliant. People often ask me, how do you go about learning more about the kinds of subjects that you cover in these videos? And the videos are cool. The videos are great, but if you want to get down to solving real problems, if you want to learn the skills yourself, Brilliant does an excellent, excellent job. It's an awesome website, and it's also an app that helps you learn by getting used to solving interesting problems in science, mathematics, and yeah, with computers. And each of the courses starts off, starts off kind of easy and fun, but then they get more and more challenging as you master the concepts. If you want to learn specifically about this stuff, they've got whole courses built around it, around topics like logic, algorithms, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. So check them out at brilliant.org slash vector. Thank you so much, Brilliant. Okay, phew. Close angle brackets, rant over, at least for now. That's what I think, and I'd love to hear what you think. Do you have any concerns about Google and the data it collects on you? Are those concerns any different than they might be for Facebook? What about Amazon? Is privacy important to you, or would you much rather get free services and free software in exchange for privacy you really don't care about anyway? Is it the best deal available today, or are you paying far too high a price for these so-called free services. Hit like, hell, if you hated the video, hit dislike, hit subscribe, and then let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching.